president's warning to Iran. The Iran deal, which may be the single worst deal I've ever seen drawn by anybody, if that deal doesn't conform to what it's supposed to conform to, there's going to be big, big problems for them. up to Capitol Hill to enforce. But some members of the president's own party say it's better to work with what's already in place. As flawed as the deal is, I believe we must now enforce the hell out of it. And if that two-year-old deal is thrown into question, Royce said the White House should lead the way. It is critical that the president lay out the facts. He should explain that his decision, uh, he should explain what it means, he should explain what it doesn't mean. And then I hope, as I've tried to do here today, the president will define a responsible path forward to confront the full range of threats. But a departure from the Iran deal could land a serious blow to America's the reputation. Against the committee's top the Democrat States, warned. We in the United States have to live up to our word. If we withdraw from the deal now, Iran would be free today from the constraints on their program and the intrusive inspections that the JCPOA puts into place. And could have an impact on crises across the globe, a former Obama administration official yes. told Congress. Both with respect to China and with respect to any effort to negotiate with North Korea, going to them and saying, hey, work a deal with us on the nuclear issue, you can count on us to actually enforce it. <laughs> That would be a laughable proposition if we just walked away from the Iranian nuclear deal. Just a week ago, Trump's own top Pentagon official told Congress the U.S. shouldn't scrap the deal. Do you believe it's in our national security interest at the present time to remain in the JCPOA? Yes, Senator, I do. The president's decision complicated by disagreement as to whether Iran is keeping up its end of the bargain. Is Iran in compliance with the, with the treaty? No, not in full compliance. The Trump administration has already certified Iranian compliance twice, but one national security analyst says the issue is a way of freeing the president from a deal he never liked. It's not clear to me that Congress really wants to get involved in a, in a, in a tough effort to, to, to pressure Iran to, to renegotiate. And frankly, I, I suspect that many congressmen know that Iran wouldn't renegotiate. And while Congress's options could also include imposing sanctions, the decision is out of their hands. Ultimately, I will do what's right for the United States and really what's right for the world, because that's really a world problem. That's beyond just the United States. That's a world problem, and it's a problem that has to be solved. Even if that problem has few easy answers. Catherine Gibson, VOA News, Capitol Hill. There was a lot of coverage of your phrase, they would report it in the media, cryptic phrase, the calm before the storm. It seemed related to Rocket Man, his term. Uh, Kim Jong Un. In terms of him having ICBM capability, nuclear capability, firing missiles over Japan, our ally, threatening Guam, and potentially maybe being able to reach the United States, continental United States, with a nuclear weapon. At some point, this is going to come to a head. What we was the calm before the storm? We can't let this to go on. We just can't. Now, you can say what you want. This should have been handled 25 years ago. It should have been handled 20 years ago and 10 years ago and five years ago. It should have been handled by numerous, not just Obama, but certainly President Obama should have taken care of it. 
Now it's at a point where it's very, very far advanced. Something has to be done. We can't allow this to happen. Now, China has been very helpful, I think. I think, I, you know, who knows? They seem to be very helpful. Uh, they cut off banking to North Korea. That's something they've never done before. Uh, they've cut down, way down on the fuel, and a lot of other things. Uh, we're going to see what happens. But we cannot allow this to happen. This should have been taken care of long ago. Uh, Clinton gave them billions of dollars, gave them lots of other things. And before the contract, the ink was dry on the contract, they were already starting again with the missiles and with the nuclear, frankly. So we are in a position, look, we're very strong. I really, I'm building up the military like nobody's ever seen. We're close to $800 million in spending. We've the word, drawn, I don't know if you know, but the military, our military was totally, you know, really depleted. Uh, you look around and you see what's going on. You take a look at what we're buying right now with the jet fighters and all of the equipment we're buying. And, you know, it's two things, really. It is jobs, and that's far less important. But we build the greatest military equipment in the world. We have missiles that can knock out a missile in the air 97% of the time. And if you send two of them, it's going to get knocked out. Is it fair to say if he keeps firing missiles, that's going to end? Well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. Want to I'm just telling you, I don't want to talk about it. Because, you know, all these people, they talk. I remember... When you said, I remember with Mosul, yeah. and you know, I use this all the time with Mosul. Uh, we are going to be attacking Mosul in four months. We're attacking Mosul in three months. Until, I said, why do they keep saying it? Attack, do it, or don't do it, or whatever. But they kept talking about it. And by the way, it turned out to be hell on wheels. It was hard because they were so totally prepared. And I'm not saying I'm doing anything, and I'm not saying I'm not. But we shouldn't be talking about it. I think it was one of the most incompetently drawn deals I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. $150 billion given. We got nothing. We got nothing. They got a path to nuclear weapons very quickly. And think of this one. $1.7 billion in cash. This is cash out of your pocket. What? You know how many airplane loads that must be? Did you ever see a million dollars like a promotion where they have a million dollars and hundred dollar bills? It's a lot of... This is $1.7 billion dollars. You'd almost say, who would be authorized to do it? And who are the people that deliver it? You may never see them again, right? Yeah. But, plane loads. But, just plane loads. So this is the worst deal. We got nothing. We got nothing. So I'm not giving anything away, but I've been saying this for a long time. You have people dancing and screaming in the streets of Iran. Now, I have to tell you, those people are possibly staged because I happen to believe the people of Iran are great people and they want freedom and they want to be sort of friendly with us. I really believe that. But they're dancing in the streets and they're, they're singing death to America and Kerry's out there negotiating a deal and giving up every single point. He'd go in, we'd like this, you're not having it. Done, done, done. It's the worst deal I've ever seen. Whether it's countrywide or any other wide, there is no worst deal. So, we will see what happens pretty soon. A lot of people are guessing, mm -hmm. but maybe there's not so much guessing. But it was an incompetently you want drawn out of deal. This deal. Look, it was it's yeah. a very bad deal. I, I'm not saying anything different tonight that I have been saying for two years. Yeah. It's a horrible, horrible embarrassment to our country. Let and we did you. it out of weakness when actually we had great strength. Let me ask you about immigration. You came up with a, a 70 point plan. There was fear after you had met with Pelosi and Schumer and you were talking about DACA. One of the things I've always noticed is you know, we always get the tax increase, we never get the spending cuts, you yeah. always get the consideration on immigration, you never get the wall built. Part of it is there will be, you said, no deal on DACA. 
unless, of course, we, it's good, we're going to end chain migration. You're going to build a wall that's going to be see-through now, so the... Well, it may be. We're, we're looking. Yeah. We right now have built five prototypes. They right. just are going up, and some of them are already finished. And I will say, they're really looking good. They're really looking good. And our country needs it. We need it not only for people, but we need it for the drugs that are pouring into our country. I mean, we have drugs that are pouring into our country, so we don't have a choice. And, you know, you can built. say what you want. Yeah. I was with Bibi Netanyahu of Israel, and he was saying, Donald, the wall works, believe me. They had an open border that was like a sieve. People just poured in. He said 99.9% .9 of the people now, it stopped. Nobody gets in. Could Nobody say, gets in. The, walls, uh, the wall, wall has by the way, to be built. It has to be built. A properly yeah. built, constructed, designed wall. High. Not a little fence like they'd have. They'd have they had walls that were so low, trucks would drive over them. Mm -hmm. It was easier to drive over it than to take it down. Can you believe it? Okay. So no so, amnesty. No, no, the wall. No amnesty. No, no amnesty. No chain migration. A chain migration is one of the disasters. You allow yeah. one person in, yeah. and that one person brings in 10 or 12 people. No DACA until that you fund the wall. DACA, uh, look, we have 800,000 people. They're not necessarily young. You know, a lot of people think they're children. I guess they average from 16 to 39 or so. But a lot of these people are in the military. They have jobs. They have this, that. It's a very, I fully understand it. But if we're going to do something, we have to get something in return. And what I want is tremendous border regulation. I want the wall, and we're going to get other things. And we're going to see if we can work something out. Now, whether or not we do, I don't know. But it would be wonderful to solve the DACA problem. And by the way, even my most conservative, hardline friends in the Republican Party would, li would really like to be able to solve 800,000 people. And honestly, these people went through a lot because th most of them went through our system. Many of them don't speak the language of their country because they've never been to their country. So we are going to try and solve that. But if we're going to solve that, we want a wall and we want great border security.